Hello students. Welcome back. Today onwards, we will discuss new chapter that is uh, principles of inheritance and variation. So this chapter weightage 10 marks in PU examination and nearly 4 to 5 bits in NEET examination. Introduction Terminology useful for understanding genetics. Gene It is a unit of heredity. Gene is a segment of DNA that codes for the synthesis of polypeptide chain or protein and they are by control a character allele a pair of genes occupying a same locus on homologous chromosomes and controlling a single or contrasting characters locus it is the position occupied by a gene on chromosome is called locus homologous chromosome two identical chromosomes in a diploid cell is called homologous chromosomes contrasting character a single character exhibit two opposite different character example if we considered height the contrasting character will be short and tall phenotype the external morphological appearance of a character is called phenotype genotype the genetic makeup or genetic constituent of phenotype character is called genotype for example already we said phenotype external morphological character suppose female female so we can say by observing externally we can send we can uh, say that uh, female and this genotype of this female genotypic expression of female is x x so this xx is the genotype ge genetic constituent of phenotype phenotype is female so we can identify female by a mammary gland it is a morphological character and uh, that means phenotypic character having mammary gland and that female genetic constituent we can express with x x that is genetic constituent now this phenotype on the previous slide we can discuss that uh, phenotype and genotype this genotype these two terms are given by Johan son 
Johansson given the words phenotype and genotype. Dominant. When two different alleles are together, one of the allele express its character by suppressing another allele is called dominant. It is represented by capital letter. Recessive. The allele which is suppressed by the dominant allele is called recessive. It is represented by small letter. Homozygous. When a character is controlled by two identical alleles is called homozygous. Example. X, X, capital X, capital X, capital T, capital T, capital Y, capital Y, small t, small t, small y, small y, etc. So, if a character is controlled by two identical alleles or genes, are called as identical. The, both the letters should be identical. Then it is called as the homozygous. Heterozygous. When a character is controlled by two different alleles, is called heterozygous. So examples: X, Y. Capital T, small t, capital Y, small y. So, in this pair of letters, one is a, a capital and another one is the small letter. So, this is two different letters, capital and small letter. That indicates heterozygous. So, it is a character is controlled by two different alleles is called as heterozygous. If it is controlled by two identical alleles, that is called as homozygous. Incomplete dominance. When two different alleles are together, neither one of the allele is fails to become complete dominance and they produce intermediate character is called incomplete dominance. Codominant. When two different alleles are together, both the alleles express their character is called codominant. Hybrid, it is the progeny or offspring obtained by crossing two parents and it has the characters of the both. Hybrid vigor, also called heterosis, the increased size, growth rate, fertility, and yield of a hybrid as compared to either of its parents called a hybrid vigor. Monohybrid. The cross made between two parents with respect to a single character is called monohybrid. Dihybrid. The cross made between two parents with respect to two characters is called dihybrid. Test cross. The cross made between 
F1 hybrids with its double recessive parent to conform homozygous or heterozygous condition of F1 hybrid. Back cross. The cross made between F1 hybrid with any one of the parents is called back cross. F1 generation or first filial generation. The hybrid obtained after crossing between two parents is called F1 generation or F1 hybrid. Heredity. The transmission of characteristics from parents to offsprings is called heredity. Inheritance. It is a process by which the characters are passed on from the parents to the progeny. Reciprocal cross. A pair of cross between a male of one strain and a female of another and vice versa is called reciprocal cross. So let's see. So first suppose if you considered male and female with uh, male and female with the proper genotypes suppose for example we can write here capital t capital t it is a female it is a symbol denoted for female it is a female a cross with a small t small t of male so it is a symbol of male individual so now the cross between female and male female is capital t and capital t and male is small t small t and in nest cross and in nest cross the capital t capital t is taken as male and it is cross with a small t small t that is considered as female so if you are cross like this in first strain in one strain to get uh, some individuals if you take uh, capital T capital T as a, a female and in nest in some another strains uh, to get uh, another strains we are considering the capital T capital T is a male so this type of cross we will called as a reciprocal cross for some to get uh, one strain or one progeny or one offspring we will get through this cross female is capital t capital t male is a small t small t and in another uh, some other strains we are getting by cross between capital t capital t of a male and small t small t of a female so such type of cross we will call as a reciprocal so whatever the cross we are taking the available progeny are similar so here it is a t is a gamut and small t is a gamut and a fertilization leads to capital t and small t so here also same so if you apply the reciprocal cross they obtained 
F1 generation, that is a first pineal generation individuals are same. And the next one, we need to consider it uh, genetics branch of biology which deals with the study of heredity and variation is called genetics Hemizygous individual contains only one gene of a pair than individual said to be hemizygous. Example, male individual is always hemizygous for sex linked gene. Phenocopy. If Different genotypes are placed in different environmental conditions. If they produce same phenotype, these individuals are said to be phenocopy of each other. Variation individuals of same species have some difference these are called variation gregor john mendel the founder of genetics gregor john mendel was not a primarily a biologist but an Austrian monk. He is considered to be the father of genetics. He was born on July 22nd in 1822. Mandel selected seven distinct triads or characters from 34 varieties of garden pea the garden pea scientific name is pisum sativum he did experiments for seven years and then presented his work at Natural History Society of Brun in 1865. His work has published in 1866, but it failed to get attention till 1900 because in that period 1859 it is a famous origin of species is published so that's why the scientific world is more attention towards that origin of species so that is the reason why the whatever the result are published by this mandal 
in that natural history society of brune was not get attention till 1900 around 34 years this research is not get any attention in 1900 mendel's principles were rediscovered by three scientists they are hugo de vries in poland corens in germany and third person test mark in austria these three scientists rediscovered that mendel's principles are mendel's research again they are rediscovered so here it is hugo de vries this belongs to holland conducted experiment on evening primrose its scientific name is vinothera uh, lamarckiana evening primrose he published the mendel's result in 1901 in flora magazine corens is belongs to germany and he conducted and also a snap dragon test mark he belongs to austria and he conducted experiment on different uh, flowering plants for rediscovering of the mendel's work why did mendel choose a garden pea mendel carried out his work on garden pea due to following advantages or reasons the pea plants are true breeds or pure breeds the flowers are bisexual that means uh, the flower consists both male and female reproductive organs the bisexual flowers exhibit self pollination as well as cross pollination the pea plant exhibit distinct contrasting characters already we discussed in definition contrasting characters opposite that is the example we are given uh, tall its contrasting character is dwarf round its contrasting character is wrinkle opposite character so the pea plant exhibit distinct contrasting characters it was easy to culture the plants in the open field and in pots the pea plant show short life span the pea plants are annuals garden pea plants are annuals life span is very short that's why he can get a, a more uh, individuals year by year so it is uh, possible to study more generations so these are all the six or the reasons why he chosen that garden pea plant true breeds or pure breeding varieties so this word we are uh, listen in the first reason of that uh, why mendel chose this pea plant so that is uh, these are the true breeds what does it mean true breeds the varieties uh, that gives rise to same form of traits characters for a number of successive generations are called as true breeds a true breed or a pure breed is the one that has undergone continuous self pollination that's why 
it gives the same form of character for a number of successive generation due to the continuous undergrown of self pollination mendel had selected 14 pure breeding pea plant varieties for his research seven pairs of contrasting characters in a garden pea plant studied by mendel they are given in that tabular form so the character the contrasting characters that is a dominant and a recessive opposite characters so one stem height so in that contrasting character dominant character is tall it represents with a capital T capital T and recessive character is a dwarf that is represented with a small t a small t and seed shape in that dominant uh, character is uh, round it is represented with the capital or capital or and uh, recessive character is wrinkled it represents with uh, smaller smaller so already we knew that uh, when we discussed the definitions of dominant and recessive dominant is always represent with the capital letters and recessive is always represent with the small letters seed color yellow capital y capital y and green it is a recessive represent with the small y small y pod shape dominant uh, is inflated or smooth it is represented with capital i capital i recessive character is constricted it is represents with small i small i pod color green is a dominant represent with capital g capital g yellow it is a recessive represents with a small g small g flower position axillary it is dominant represents with the capital a capital a recessive it is a ter terminal it is a recessive character represents with small a small a flower color violet it is represents with the capital v capital v and recessive character is white represents with small v small v so here the diagrammatic representation of that seven pairs of contrasting characters studied by mandel so in that character dominant triad diagram as well as recessive triad diagram so in that uh, first see that uh, seed shape so seed shape uh, the dominant character it is uh, a round and it is uh, represented with a letter already we studied in previous slide that is capital r and capital r wrinkled uh, it is a recessive character so that means it is a suppressed the recessive character is suppressed by the round dominant one so when these two genes are together so this wrinkled is represent with a smaller smaller so when these two genes are together capital r and smaller having in a individual capital r and smaller we are saying that capital r that is round is the dominant and smaller is the recessive so now why it is called as dominant this dominant character is suppress this recessive wrinkle character that's why this individual express as a round the character is expressed as a round because of presence of this dominant gene capital r so that's why it is called a dominant round is a dominant character and wrinkle is the recessive character now seed color the dominant character is yellow and uh, recessive character is gene green and uh, flower color 
that is a violet is dominant white is the recessive now pod shape so pod is and uh, now this is we can observe in this the pod inside the seeds are present this called as the pod the center it is considered as the pod and inside this pond uh, the seeds are present inside it so the pod shape it is uh, in plaited or full that is uh, a smooth the surface of this pot is uh, smooth so that is dominant and constricted then it is called as some folds are present on the pod so small uh, folds are present constricted that is the recessive and some other are uh, pod color that is the uh, green is the uh, dominant pod color as well as uh, yellow it is uh, recessive flower position now let's see this uh, flowers are present at the axle axle this is the axial region for example see here now it is a stem and it is a flower so at this junction if flower is uh, this is called this region is called as the axle so it is a dominant and the flower is present at terminal so now if flowers are formed at this terminal region then it is uh, called as then it is uh, called as this region is called as the terminal it is the recessive stem height that is uh, length if it is tall is dominant and dwarf or maybe short is the recessive mendel's law of inheritance mendel conducted hybridization experiments for 7 years and propose the loss of inheritance in living organisms he was successful in giving loss of inheritance because it was the first time that statistical analysis and mathematical logic were applied to the problems in biology his experiments had a large sampling size which gave greater credibility to the data the results from his data pointed to general rules of inheritance rather than on specific character that is reason why he succeeded giving this loss of inheritance according to mendel various characters or triads are controlled by factors these factors occur in pairs a factor contains information about the form of the character or triad nowadays uh, the factors called genes the factors were referred as a gene by johansson the gene term is given by johansson not only gene it is also given the terms of phenotype as well as genotype the factors may be similar or dissimilar each gamete whether male or female possesses only one factor of the pair a paired condition of a factor is restored in the zygote the offspring formed from zygote receives only one factor from each parent 
so it is very clear instead of gene the mandel used the word a factor so now see that uh, fourth or maybe third fourth and fifth point each gamete whether male or female gamete possesses only one factor of the pair for example we can see that uh, female x x when gametes are formed each gamete will get x in the ovum and x in the another ovum so that means as per that uh, point number 3 each gamete either male or female we are taken that female possess only one factor of the pair what he is saying that the factors are present in the paired form factors are present in paired form in the diploid cell they are paired and these paired forms of the factors or get only one out of this pair only one factor is present in a gamete then when it is restored when it become paired again so the paired condition of the factors is restored in the zygote zygote is formed due to the fertilization when these gametes are fused similarly when you consider his a uh, male here male is x and y then the gametes one of the gamete consists x chromosome and another gamete it consists the y chromosome so during fertilization x of the female and y of the male is fused that is fertilized then it forms the zygote and the paired condition is restored either male suppose x of the female and x of the male it is fused then it restores the female condition paired condition x and x so the paired condition of factors are restored in zygote that is uh, after fertilization so the offspring formed from zygote receive only one factor from each parent it is clear here x and y the x it is uh, received from the mother and why it is received from the father so receives only one factor from each parent according to the mandel inheritance of loss inheritance of one gene it is also considered as mono hybrid cross a cross between two parents that differ in only one heritable character is called mono hybrid cross the resulting hybrid is called mono hybrid explanation the tall stem plants acted as female plants the dwarf plants acted as male plants cross pollination was done in which pollen grains from dwarf plants they are males were transferred to the stigma of the tall plants tall plants are the female mendel collected all seeds formed in the flowers of the tall plants and sowed all plants that grew from these seeds had tall stems only he marked these 
as plants of F1 generation or first pineal generation. Let's uh, see the representation of that explanation part. So he taken the female plants parents as a, a pure tall plant is a female plant as a parent and this pure tall plant of the female produces a gamete that is small t okay let's see and he taken a pure dwarf plant as a male that is represented with small t small t dwarf is represented recessive character and he crossed these two plants these two plants that is a uh, cross pollinated these two pure tall and pure dwarf plant now this pure dwarf plant produces a gamete that is with small t so the gametes produced by all the gametes produced by this pure dwarf plant consists small t and all the gametes produced by female pure tall capital t consists capital t and when they undergo fertilization it produces a zygote or maybe a offspring with capital t and small t so this generation we will called as f1 generation and all these individuals are tall because here capital t is the dominant and uh, the small t small t is the recessive character so small t is it is a recessive and here the capital t in this is dominant so that's why this capital t character is expressed out and the small t character is suppressed that's why all f1 generation individuals are tall and this f1 generation individuals are also called as hybrids also called as hybrids so i am repeating again so he taken the female plants or the tall plants pure tall plants that is uh, double dominant that means uh, both are having dominant gene capital t capital t that is pure tall plant considered as the female and pure dwarf plant that is having small t small t is considered as a male and this tall plant produces a gametes with a capital t and the pure dwarf plant produces a gametes with a small t and when they undergo fertilization and it produces a, a zygote with capital t and small t once remember that uh, mendel's inheritance we discuss the factors so here in parent cell the factors are paired and the paired factors are separated during gametes so each gamete receives only one of the factor from the parent cell only one and when they are restored when after fertilization they are restored means regain in a pair condition in the zygote 
that is capital T and small t. Here it is a paired condition. But in gametes, it is uh, only one of the factor received by the gametes. And they are fertilized to form the F1 generation. And this F1 generation, in this inheritance of one gene, all F1 generation individuals are tall. 100% of the plants are tall. Which type of tall? Heterozygous. Because in this F1 generation, the genotype, genetic composition is capital T, small t, heterozygous individuals. Whereas parents are homozygous tall and homozygous recessive. Male is homozygous recessive and female is homozygous dominant. But the F1 individuals are heterozygous tall. That means this individual consists the genotype of both the parents. Hence, this F1 generation individuals are also called as hybrids. After getting F1 generation individuals, Mendel allowed the plants of F1 generation to reproduce by self-pollination and their seeds were obtained. So, in for getting F1 generation individuals, first he crossed the parents, cross-pollinated the parents. Whereas, after getting this F1 generation individuals, he allowed this F1 individuals, F1 individuals are having capital T, small t. The genotype of this F1 individuals are capital T, small t. These individuals uh, he allowed to reproduce by self-pollination and he gets the seeds. When he sowed these seeds, and again, when he planted the seeds, the seeds grew into tall stem plants as well as dwarf stem plants. This generation is called F2 generation. So, F2 generation is obtained when the F2 generation is obtained. The F2 generation is obtained due to cross between F1 generation. The cross between F1 generation that is capital T and small t. When he crossed these F1 individuals, the resultant individuals are called as the F2 generation. In this F2 generation, he observed both he observed both the tall plants as well as dwarf plants. Whereas in F1 individuals, all plants are tall only. So let's come to the representation of that F2 generation. So here, this uh, gene composition, capital T, female, it is uh, uh, with uh, a pheno, that means genotype is uh, capital T and small t. This is F1 generation. And uh, males are also capital T, small t, when he self-pollinated. And they produce the gametes. So gametes are two types of gametes because they are heterozygous condition two types of gametes are formed capital gamete with capital t and a gamete with small t similarly males also male gametes also some of the male gametes with capital t and some of the male gametes with small t so when he crossed the f1 individuals here, capital T, small t, this genotype he obtained during 
F1 generation. So that F1 generation is a self-pollinated self-pollinated first it produced the two types of gametes so two types of gametes because of heterozygosity the parents that means this f1 generation individuals genotype is capital t small t two different alleles so due to presence of two different alleles the gametes are also produced in different manner. So some of the gametes contain capital T and some of the gametes contain small t. So then let's go for the fertilization of these gametes and number of individuals obtained during this cross. So let's see the F2 generation individuals. So now here uh, it is uh, male produce the gametes uh, with capital T and small t and female uh, produce the gametes with capital T small t. Now when it is crossed this capital gamete with this capital T is crossed with the gamete of male with the capital T then the resultant individual with capital T, capital T, pure character that is tall. And the same capital T gamete of female is fused with the gamete with a small t of a male, then it gives capital T, small t, heterozygous tall this is and again this small t gamete with the small t of female is uh, fuses with uh, gamete uh, with capital t of male then it gives the capital t small t again it is heterozygous tall and the small t gamete of female fuses with the a gamete with the small t of the male then it gives small t small t that is dwarf so what we discussed there when he crossed the f1 individuals in f2 generation mendel observed that reappearance of the parent characters that is tall and dwarf both he observed but in F1 generation, only tall plants are produced, whereas in F2 generation, both tall as well as dwarf plants are produced. Based on that F1 and F2 generation formations during one gene concept, the proportion of the plants are tall plants are 3 and dwarf plants are 1 in the f2 generation tall plants are 3 and dwarf plants are 1 genotype of the plants genotype that means genotype genetic composition of the plants homozygous plants that means plants with the capital t capital t homozygous plant homozygous tall plants with capital T capital T is 1 heterozygous tall plants heterozygous capital T small t the tall plants with the genetic composition capital T small t are two plants so here the both are tall plants 1 plus 2 3 tall plants and homozygous dwarf plant that is a small t a small t it is a one small t small t that plant dwarf plants are one so the genotypes of plants homozygous tall one heterozygous tall plants two homozygous dwarf is one so once come to the proportion of the plants total number of tall plants homozygous tall one heterozygous tall to total three plants 
and the dark plant is 1. And let us come. Therefore, the phenotypic ratio, phenotype, that means the external morphological feature, external observation. So, genotype we cannot see with our naked eyes. So, phenotypic character is nothing but the character which is observed with our naked eye. So, tallness is a external feature, phenotype. So, the tall plants are three phenotypic plants phenotype based on phenotype tall plants are three three is to dark plant one that is phenotypic ratio if you observe at the genetic level gene composition so then the tall plants are two kinds two different types that is one is homozygous that means a, a tall plant uh, with identical genes and the tall plant with two different genes so identical genes one plant and two different genes tall plant with two different genes are two one is to two and dark plant one is to one so genotypic ratio is one is to two is to one one is the homozygous tall and two are heterozygous tall and one is homozygous that is genotypic ratio so the most significant feature of this experiment was that darkness disappeared in f1 generation but reappeared in about 25 percent plants of the f2 generation so already we observed in the explanation part during f1 generation or first phenyl generation all the plants are tall that means uh, darkness is disappear during f1 generation but the tall as well as uh, dark character we can observe during f2 generation in this F2 generation, out of four individuals, three are, that means 75% of the plants are tall and only one is dwarf, that is 25% of the plants are dwarf. In this three again, one is homozygous tall that means 25 percent of the individuals are homozygous tall and two that is 50 percent of individuals are heterozygous tall and one 25 percent are dwarf plants ponet square Punnett square is a checkerboard form devised by a British geneticist R.C. Punnett for the study of genetics. It is a graphical representation to calculate probability of all possible genotypes of offsprings in a genetic cross. The possible gametes are written on two sides. The two, the top row, horizontal row, and left column, vertical column. So again, I am repeating this point. The possible gametes are written on two sides. So one side is a top row, horizontal row. And another side is a left column with vertical column. Usually, male gametes are written in top row and female gametes are written in left column. The squares are filled by combining gametes from both the parents. 
let's see the punnett square representation so during f2 generation we shown on checkerboard so this checkerboard we will call as punnett square so in this punnett square we will represent the male and female gametes on both sides on two sides so the top horizontal it shows the male gametes and the vertical side it shows the female gametes so here we are mentioned that symbol the female gamete shows a vertically and the male gamete shows horizontally and the between these boxes are filled with the combining of these gametes so capital t capital t it is a combining of a male gamete with capital t and female gamete with the capital t so the combination or combining of these gametes are mentioned in the squares so it is this representation is given by rc punnett for easy to understand the combination of that gametes thank you dear students the principles of inheritance and variation comes under concept genetics so the genetics are always puzzles if you are not understand properly so that's why please listen carefully and make a proper notes and work on it otherwise they are always puzzles thank you